Hello, and welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is all about food, one of most people's favorite subjects. What does the Bible say about food? What words can we learn about food? I hope you're not too hungry, and I hope you enjoy the lesson. Let's get started. So we start off in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb yielding seed, which is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which bears fruit yielding seed. It will be your food. Yielding. 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 You get a return of a product or a specific amount of money. I sold my computer program and it yielded a profit of a million dollars. Don't we all hope? Yielding. So now one Genesis 1.29 becomes this. God said, behold, I have given you every herb yielding a profit seed which is on the surface of all the earth, yielding. Genesis 1.30, to every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Creeps. Creeps, creeps, moving in a way so you do not make much noise. I was creeping slowly past the baby's crib, but he woke up anyway. Creeps. Genesis 1.30, to every animal of the earth and to every bird of the sky and to everything that moves without making much noise on the earth. Creeps. Numbers, chapter 11, verse 6. But now we have lost our appetite. There is nothing at all except this manna to look at. Appetite. Appetite appetite, a desire to try to satisfy your body's needs. My teenage son has a healthy appetite, so I take him to the buffet. Appetite. So numbers 11.6. But now we have lost our desire to satisfy our hunger. There is nothing at all except this manna. To look at. That's why I use this picture, because the Korean says no food allowed. And that's what these people were feeling. Lost my appetite. Numbers chapter 11, verse 8. The people went around, gathered it, and ground it in mills or beat it in mortars and boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. Its taste was like the taste of fresh oil. So mortar, mortar, mortar. We usually say a mortar and a pestle, mortar and a pestle. So the mortar is a cup-shaped bowl used with a mortar to crush things like seeds. Used in making medicine, and in cooking. So the mortar is the bowl, the pestle is the thing you pound it with. Pound, pound, pound. So you take some seeds, pound away until it becomes a powder. Mortar. So this uh, numbers 11, eight becomes, the people went around, gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in mortars. So the people went around, gathered it, 
and ground it in mills or beat it in cup-shaped bowls for crushing things. Mortar. Deuteronomy 8.3. He humbled you, allowed you to be hungry, and fed you with manna, which you didn't know. Neither did your fathers know. That he might teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of Yahweh's mouth. Proceeds, proceeds, proceeds. Keep going with an action. Keep going. My mother told me to proceed with caution in a new relationship. Good advice. Or sometimes you'll see uh, in one of those lawyer type shows where somebody makes an uh, objection and the judge says, proceed, keep going, keep on with the trial. Proceeds. So Deuteronomy 8, we'll just go with the last half, 3b. But man lives by every word that proceeds out of Yahweh's mouth. Or, but man lives by every word that keeps going out of Yahweh's mouth. Proceeds. Let's proceed <laughs> with this lesson. Deuteronomy 8.7. For Yahweh your God brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of springs, and underground water flowing into valleys and hills. So a brook, a brook, brook, a small stream, like we have it in this picture, right? So this is a small stream. It's behind me too. <laughs> So a small stream, very pretty. Sometimes we call them babbling brook. The babbling brook, the, the babbling brook make a soothing sound to relax by. So the babbling brook, as the water flows, very soothing brook. So Deuteronomy 8, 7, for Yahweh your God, brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, becomes, for Yahweh your God, brings you into a good land, a land of small streams of water, a brook. Now, we have sort of a visual now too. This is a nice restaurant I used to go to, uh, kind of a seafood restaurant. So they actually served uh, fish head soup. <laughs> it's exactly the way it sounds. You get a head of a fish. I wanted to show that, but it might be too scary. So this is a visual dictionary. Okay, we're just going to give you the words in English. You probably know what this is in your native country. So these are called cucumbers, cucumbers, cucumbers. So we slice these up and we usually have them in salads. So cucumbers, I like to have them in sandwiches too. They'll go great with meat and tomatoes and lettuce. Cucumbers. Then we have melons, melons, melons. I love melons, they're so sweet. Just make sure you take the seeds in the middle out you scoop them up. We used to have them with ice cream. So you move the seeds, you put ice cream in that middle hole, and now you have melons with ice cream. So melons. Leeks. 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 So these are kind of like onions. They add just a little bit of flavor when you cook. So sometimes when I'll cook something, especially for, especially for a soup, you know, 
leeks add that little bit of extra flavor. You cut them up, little pieces, add them to soup. Leeks. So now we have onions, onions, onions. We also have garlic, garlic, garlic. So both add flavor when you're cooking. So here we have a red onion and we have a white onion. So I was always told if you want to not cry when working with onions, just dip them in water. Take all the outside of the onion off while it's in water. Also garlic, the little chunks you get, comes off in these little chunks shaped like that. So those are called cloves, right? So cloves of garlic, and they add a lot of flavor, right? So onions, garlic. So now we have from Numbers chapter 11, verse 7. The manna was like coriander seed, and it looked like bdellium. So this is what coriander seed looks like. This is a spice made from the dried seed of the coriander plant. It has citrus flavor that is spicy. I've never had coriander seed. So if you have, let me know. <laughs> what is it like? And it says their coriander seed looked like bdellium. And I believe bdellium was black. So I'm not sure... Maybe it was a different kind of coriander seed. If you know, let me know. So Deuteronomy 8.8. 8. This says, a land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, and pomegranates. A land of olive trees and honey. So this picture doesn't have all of those but it is a lot of food to take in. So here we have wheat, wheat, wheat. So they use wheat in one of my favorite foods, cereal, right? So we used to have a cereal called wheat checks, right? Certain kind, little squares, looks like this wheat. So wheat checks. So I love cereal made of wheat. This is a cereal grain. Then we have barley, barley, barley. So this is, again, could be a cereal grain, but they use it for making soups and other things. Sure, you might recognize it from the way you cook. How do you use barley? Barley. Then we have Fig trees, fig trees, fig trees. So those are what figs look like hanging on their, on their vines. So fig trees. So I'm sure the figs they had uh, in the Bible were different. So these are what modern day figs look like. Never tried a fig? <laughs> Not sure if I would like it. Do you like figs? Pomegranates, pomegranates, pomegranates. And this is what a pomegranate looks like. I believe you take off the outer skin. Not sure how you eat this. I've seen this in Korea on the breakfast buffet where they have different kinds of fruits. So I've seen them in Korea. Not sure if they're native to Korea. And I'm not sure what they would taste like. Didn't have the, <laughs> it didn't have the uh, calmness <laughs> to try it. Next time I will. So pomegranates. Olive trees. Olive trees. Olive trees. So this is one kind of olive, the way it looks. Some people like eating olives directly. Uh, I love olive oil. It's very healthy. I cook everything in olive oil because it's supposed to be very, very healthy. 
and I like the taste. So you might want to think, how do you use olive oil? Olive trees, honey, honey, honey. Most people know this is made from bees, right? They go and get the nectar from flowers and they make this honey. I like this in my tea in the mornings. So honey in my tea. It's very good in iced tea. You know, you start off with the hot water, add the honey, mix it up, add the tea bags, let it sit. So honey, very sweet and nice. Honey. Now, in Joshua 5.11 says this, they ate unleavened cakes and parched grain of the produce of the land on the next day after the Passover, in the same day. So unleavened, unleavened, unleavened. This is made without yeast or other ways or other ways to make your bread rise. So we ate unleavened bread as we forgot to buy the yeast. Knew we should have bought that. So unleavened. So if you look on this picture to the right, you see that uh, the bread is very flat. Right? It looks kind of lifeless, right? Still good to eat, still tastes great. It's just flatter. Normal bread rises. So unleavened. Exodus 16, 13 said this. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay around the camp. So we have this word quail, quail, quail. So this would have been similar to the bird they would have eaten. This is a California quail. So the quails they would have had in the wilderness might have been different. But this is a quail, a bird that they ate, quail. Exodus 16.31, the house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. So wafer, wafer, wafer. If you look off to my picture here, that little cookie in the ice cream, that's a wafer, very thin. So it's a thin cookie or a cracker. And it's sometimes used in the Lord's Supper. So if you're a Christian, right, celebrate Jesus's death. And if you're not a Christian, it's okay. It's just one way that Christians use this idea of a wafer. I like wafers with ice cream. A wafer tastes good with ice cream, which it does. So I like it with a wafer, sometimes with a cookie. Great with, especially for me, vanilla ice cream. Wafer. So Deuteronomy 8, 9. A land in which you shall eat bread without scarcity. You shall not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you may dig copper. So scarcity, scarcity, scarcity it means there's not enough of something, a shortage. In times of scarcity, please do not water your lawn or wash your car. So in times of scarcity, please do not water. We have this in California a lot in the United States. They literally run out of water. So please don't waste it washing your car. So Deuteronomy 8, 9 says this, a land in which you shall eat bread without scarcity. And so that becomes a land in which you shall eat bread without a shortage. 
you have plenty of bread to eat. Scarcity. Ecclesiastes 3.13. Also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy good in all his labor is the gift of God. So I have this pile of seafood here. This was a coastal town, famous for seafood. So to some people that may look wonderful. Some people may not like it. I love seafood. So a nice mixture of seafood there. Eat and drink and enjoy good. Labor, labor, labor. This is hard work you do with your hands and your back. Hard work. I put in a hard day's labor, but I get paid well. So some people, very good shape, enjoy a hard day's labor. Labor. So Ecclesiastes 13. Also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy good in all his hard day's work is the gift of God. So enjoy your hard labor. Ecclesiastes 9, 7. Go your way, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already accepted your works. So this picture isn't bread. Again, it's more seafood from that coastal town. Um, so one man's bread is another man's seafood. So we have this word, merry, merry, merry. This is lively, cheerful, and happy. So if you ever see the Lord of the Rings movies, one of the characters' name was Mary. And that's where this comes from. He's lively, cheerful, and happy. It's actually a really nice name, right? Just a happy young man. You can hear Merry Christmas everywhere during the Christmas season. At least in America, that's what we say. We say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. So cheerful, happy Christmas. In England, I think they just say Happy Christmas. So means the same thing though. Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas. So Ecclesiastes 9, 7. Go your way, eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart. We could word it this way. Go your way. Eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a cheerful and happy heart. Wonderful word, Mary. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1b, the second half. Friends, eat. Friends, drink. Yes, drink abundantly, beloved abundantly, abundantly, abundantly. There is plenty and in large amounts. The food here is terrible, but it is in abundant amounts. <laughs> Comes from an old joke. It, the food's terrible, but at least they have large amounts. Abundant, abundantly. So Song of Solomon 5.1b. Friends eat, friends drink. Yes, drink abundantly, beloved. Friends eat, friends drink. Yes, drink in large amounts, beloved. So enjoy abundant food and abundant drink. Abundant. All right. Isaiah says this, why do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which doesn't satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in richness. 
These pitchers, they're actually crickets. If you know what a cricket is, it's a little bug. Chirp, chirp, chirp. <laughs> Make all kinds of noise. And I got these when I was in Guam, when I took my trip to Guam. And so they have this as a snack. <laughs> you know, they have chocolate bars and crickets. And I love the flavors. Sour cream and onion crickets. Bacon and cheese crickets. <laughs> Mexican spice larvae. Not even crickets yet, just the larvae. So, but the word here is diligently, diligently, diligently. You do things carefully and correctly in your duties and in your work. If you study diligently, you might get into Harvard, if that's your choice. That's why I have on my table this little big or this big pile of books. If you read a lot, maybe you'll get into a good college, get into a good job, or at least just learn a lot diligently. So Isaiah 55, listen diligently to me and eat that which is good. Becomes listen carefully to me and eat that which is good. If you wanna eat crickets, Fine, if that's what you enjoy. But eat that which is good for you. First Corinthians 6.12 says this. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of anything. So in this series, I use the World English Bible. Uh, for one thing, it's not copyrighted. So we always worry about that. I like this uh, version. One of the reasons I like it, it comes up with these very interesting words. These words are very good for taking the TOEFL test, for instance or just learning different words. So we have this word expedient, 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 very interesting word. Something is practical or convenient, but it is also possibly improper or immoral. So it's expedient. It would be expedient for me to exceed the speed limit to get my pregnant wife to the hospital. Your wife is big with child. You got to get her to the hospital. So yeah, it's practical. It's convenient to go very fast, but it's also possibly improper or immoral or illegal in this uh, idea here. So the idea of expedient. So all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are practical, but possibly immoral. So expedient. First Corinthians 8.13. Therefore, if food causes my brother to stumble, I will eat no meat forever more, that I don't cause my brother to stumble. So this picture actually comes from Prague, another place I've traveled to. And this is pork knee. Yeah, the knee of the pork. Really good, by the way. So uh, this picture doesn't show it. it as a number of sauces you dip into it, some mustard and things. Horseradish, some people like it with. So you get a whole big, huge pork knee. So I like this. But some people don't eat pork, and I understand that. And some people don't eat knee. I also understand that. But very big specialty in Prague. But this is the idea of stumble, stumble, stumble. To almost fall from losing your balance. But it also means your bad behavior leads someone else to do something bad. 
but as those two ideas. You physically almost fall, but also bad behavior causes someone to stumble morally. I, it kind of pushes them to do things they don't want to do. So bad friends can cause a good kid to stumble and join them, right? So he starts smoking cigarettes or drinking beer because bad friends can cause you to stumble, right? So be careful who you hang around with. So this becomes, you know, therefore a food causes my brother to stumble, right? I will eat no meat forevermore that I don't cause my brother to stumble. So therefore a food causes my brother to do something bad. I will eat no meat forevermore that I don't cause my brother to do something bad. So always look out for your brother. Don't cause them to stumble. Exodus 16, eight. Moses said, now Yahweh will give you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to satisfy you. This is uh, another kind of famous meal in Asia. I'll leave you to figure out what that is. Satisfy, satisfy, satisfy. You get what you want, need, or desire. So I was satisfied with my meal and left the waitress a big tip satisfied, got what I wanted. So Exodus 16, 8b. And in the morning, bread to satisfy you. Or, and in the morning, bread to give you what you want. Satisfy. Exodus 16, 20. Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to Moses. But some of them left of it until the morning. So it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Foul, foul, foul. It smells or tastes terrible. Ugh. I left the milk in the refrigerator for a year and it tasted foul. I'm sure it would after a year. So foul. But some of them left of it until the morning. So it bred worms and became foul. This becomes. But some of them left of it until the morning. So it bred worms and became terrible to eat. Foul. So. There's Exodus 16, 20 again. Just a quick note. This is a very typical restaurant in Korea and in parts of Asia. And the idea is you sit on the floor. And so for some of you, that might seem very strange as it is to me. But that table is only, you know, this high. You know, you have to sit on the floor. No chairs, not even pads usually, sometimes pads. So this is the way they eat food, sometimes in Korea. And they're perfectly comfortable with that. So speaking of food, this is the way they eat their food. Very interesting. So there we have it. All kinds of food. <laughs> I'm sure we're all going to rush right out to have lunch or dinner. So we learn many different kinds of just words for food, very important in general talking in English to learn food words, but also some things about how to work with food and restaurants and things like that. So I hope you learn things you can actually use. So enjoy all about food and I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy your lunch, enjoy your dinner. See you later, bye.